This is not good, ladies and gentlemen. So, as we all know, after the Clippers Lakers Christmas Day matchup, as the Clippers were able to get the better of the Lakers, um, we saw a plethora of tweets from Kyle Kuzma's trainer. And it pretty much summing up here, we've already talked about it in a previous video. It led to Kyle Kuzma's trainer saying LeBron James was dodging smoke from Ka uh, Kawhi Leonard all night. Now, it is worth noting that Kyle Kuzma's trainer did train Kawhi Leonard at one point in time, no longer training him. And um, he went on his Instagram story and, and unleashed some tweets in the direction of LeBron James as he was on vacation saying LeBron wasn't putting in the work that Kawhi Leonard is putting into his game. And then Kyle Kuzma got on social media and seemingly responded to his trainer's tweets by saying, let's just call a spade a spade. Seemingly agreeing with his trainer who said, yeah, LeBron was dodging smoke from Kawhi. Now we found out via LeBron James that Kyle Kuzma did come to him the next day. I believe they were in Portland to take on the Trailblazers. And Kyle Kuzma did have his best game of the season against the Portland Trailblazers. LeBron had a good game as well. Um, LeBron did say uh, Kuzma came up to him and you know told him he can't control. I'm summarizing here. He can't control what his trainer says. I don't know if Kyle Kuzma's fired the trainer. You probably got to fire your trainer after that. Uh, also, to add some more to this story, Kyle Kuzma has deleted the tweet in which he said, let's call a spade a spade. Kyle Kuzma did say that the tweet was not pertaining to LeBron James. I, I, I don't believe that. I think that's a lie, a bullfaced lie. But it, it kind of culminates here. The first issue that we got in L.A., at least off the court, rather, right? Uh, look, the Lakers, I believe, are one piece away from me calling them the favorites to win a championship. I thought the piece was Kyle Kuzma. I thought he'd be the third option. I, I'm high on Kyle Kuzma. I've been high on Kyle Kuzma since he got into the league. Uh, you know, watching Brandon Ingram and Lonzo Ball struggle to figure it out. I had always been a fan of Kyle Kuzma's game. I just thought the dude came out and balled, slept on, spent a, a significant amount of time in college. And he was much more mature than B.I. and Lonzo uh, in the league. And Josh Hart as well. Uh, thus far during the league, and I thought he was a guy that the Lakers could keep going forward. Even if the Lakers didn't get Anthony Davis, post LeBron, I was like, yo, Kyle Kuzma could be a star in this league one day. But I told y'all, if you go back and watch some of my videos, coming into the year, I said, I don't like Kyle Kuzma headspace. I thought he came in with the wrong headspace. He had been on Instagram all summer with Instagram model chicks. And I was like, fine, do what you do. But generally speaking, these things go hand in hand. When you see a guy posting the Instagram models, and you can kind of see him. But I call it public figure land. Well, you know, he's a basketball player. His, he gets paid to play basketball. That's his main source of income. That's his, his number one occupation is to play basketball. You know, when I see a guy start to make those posts about chicks and put the color in their hair, in my, and he's living in L.A., in my mind, I think, okay, he's starting to venture off into public figure land. You can In your bio on Instagram, you can label yourself a public figure. And I always say to people who don't got nothing else going, they call themselves public figures. And I was just kind of joking. I said, Kyle Kuzma started in the public figure land. I don't think he's going to have a great season with the Lakers. Truth be told, we're, what, two, three months into the season? Kyle Kuzma's been unhealthy for most of the season. And when he's been on the court, he's been fairly disappointed. He's been kind of commanding that second unit, getting a few minutes after the first quarter and after, you know, pretty much at the end of the first and the end of the third quarters with Anthony Davis. And the top of the second quarter and the top of the fourth quarter, he's getting some minutes with LeBron James. If he has it going, he might close a game out. But that more times than not, Kyle Kuzma has not been in that Laker lineup at the end of basketball games. I don't think he's happy right now. A, a, a tweet from Kyle Kuzma that I didn't like as the season started, as the Lakers exercised his option. I believe it's a 2 or $3 million option. He's still on a rookie deal. Um, Kyle Kuzma got on his social media, and I'm summarizing here. He said something along the lines of, Yay, me, I'm rich. As a lot of other guys were getting bags. I didn't like that tweet from Kyle Kuzma. I thought he was out of line for saying that. Uh, yeah, you are rich. Two, three million dollars put you in the top 1% in this country. I didn't like the sarcasm, the privilege in his voice. But all that being said, I said, this dude's on the hot seat. Fast forward, the Lakers are off to an incredible start this year. But they can't beat the teams that will be around come end of May, top of June. The Clippers and the Milwaukee Bucks. They've lost to the Clippers twice, Bucks once. Might need to make one move at the deadline. 
Look up and down that Lakers roster. Not a lot of movable assets. You're going to trade Danny Green's contract? Maybe there's a little bit of value in Danny Green's contract if a team needs a shooter. Obviously, shooting is so valuable in the NBA. But at $15 million a clip, I doubt it. Contavious Caldwell Pope? No. Dwight Howard? Literally, the Lakers were able to steal him on the buyout market. I don't believe Dwight Howard is valuable to non-contending teams. Meaning he's playing hard for the Lakers, but I don't know if I would want him on another roster right now for a team that's not contending, meaning he didn't have a lot of trade value. Maybe there's a little bit of value in JaVale McGee, but you wouldn't trade a, an athletic big like that that works well in that lineup. Uh, DeMarcus Cousins out with injury. Look up and down his roster. Rajon Rondo, not a lot of trade value. Not naming Anthony Davis or LeBron James. Who you going to make a move for? Avery Bradley? He's been injury prone. It's not a lot of guys you can make moves for. Maybe Alex Caruso has a little bit of value. Obviously, you, you moved a lot of your picks to get AD. So how do you get better if this team is likely one spot away from getting into that championship contention spot? Kyle Kuzma. Go along with all this drama and all these storylines with him behind the scenes not playing well. Guys know around the league that Kyle Kuzma can get a bucket if he's got the ball in his hands. And I think he's the only guy that could be valuable for the Lakers at the deadline, depending on what they're looking for. We'll see what's out there. Not a lot out there at the trade deadline. Usually you can kind of get gauge the trade deadline based on the free agent market that's coming up. Obviously, last year it was a big free agent market. The trade deadline was crazy last year. Not a lot of talk around this trade deadline. We're in 2020 right now. You know, they pushed the trade deadline up before the All-Star game a couple years ago. Not a lot of not a lot of names out there right now. So, I mean, I'm just putting it out there. It doesn't seem like it's going to be a hot trade deadline. But Kyle Kuzma might have just made his way out of L.A. He is the piece that will go. If LeBron and AD are like, yo, we need something else to get better and beat the Clippers. We need somebody who's going to play some defense. If it takes Kyle Kuzma to get Andre Iguodala, I'd consider it. I obviously know Kuzma's better than Andre Iguodala. Obviously. Right? But Andre Iguodala is just hanging around in that L.A. area. And if he doesn't sign with the Lakers, he might go to the Clippers. So by default, if you're the Lakers, you got to be in the running for Iguodala's services because you don't want the team that's already likely better than you with a lot of good perimeter, borderline great perimeter defenders in Beverly, George, and Kawhi. You don't want them getting a fourth defender in Iguodala. So looking around like, Yo, the Lakers might have to make a move. Kuzma, maybe, and you trade him to Memphis for Iguodala and in a, in a pick, maybe, if, if Memphis is listening. so uh, Jeff Green's going to be on the market. The Lakers got to do something, I believe. And I, I think if, I think it might be Kyle Kuzma. Bev it up, them tweets. And that's bad, by the way. Those tweets are It's not a great look for LeBron. It's not a great look for the Lakers, man. It's You know, this is another teammate going out of their way to disrespect LeBron again. And I said this in my previous video. I'll say it again. LeBron plays both sides of the fence too much. You can't be the most popular athlete of this decade and also be the cool guy. We seen guys like Kobe and Michael Jordan be so great at being the most popular guy in the league at their given times. And they, they wanted you to know I'm popular, I'm popping. You not me. LeBron is popular as Mike and Kobe, right? But he also wants you to like him. He doesn't want to be the villain. Kobe and Mike never cared about being the villain. And I think that creates this conundrum in the locker rooms because you got these teammates of LeBron's feel like second class citizens. With Kobe, he was the star of the room. LeBron wants to be one of the guys when he's the star of the room. He's been that way for his whole life. So I think that creates this weird dynamic with teammates. And that's how you get teammates feeling cool enough to get on social media and potentially talk about you when they're your teammates. You got Kyle Kuzma on Twitter agreeing with his trainer who's dissing one of his teammates. In what world is that okay? You think Kyle Kuzma would have ever got on Twitter? And said something about Kobe? You think Nick Young would have ever got on Twitter? And said something about Kobe? You think Rick Fox 
would have ever got on social media and said something about Shaq, you'd think Scottie Pippen would have ever got on what was popping at the time. I have no idea. Social media won a thing. You think Scottie Pippen would have talked out of the side of his mouth about Mike in a public setting? He might have been an, a unanimous with it, but not publicly. No, you don't do that. You don't do that. That's the, that, that's the dynamic that LeBron has created. And I, I think it might get Kuzma traded. I'm not 100% sure, but I would not be surprised. Y'all let me know in the comment box below. If you were the LA Lakers with the season that Kyle Kuzma has had thus far, would he be on a trading block for you? Let me know. I'm out. You in the sports, we got you. NFL news, I got you. NBA news, NBA highlights, NBA full coverage, feature stories, all that great stuff, I got you. We even got a little bit of Madden 2K mixed in. Subscribe to this platform, and I got you. More quality content on the way. Subscribe.